Increasing public access to carbon emissions data, that was one of the suggestions raised by MPs to strengthen Singapore's efforts against climate change. This would require appropriate data sharing frameworks to be developed. Now for more on this, we're joined by Professor Benjamin Horton from NTU's Asian School of the Environment. Professor Horton, thanks for joining us this evening. Firstly, so many types of climate data are out there. Can you give us a sense of what kind of data could be useful or meaningful if shared? Well, I think the interest in climate data stems from the interest of the general public regarding the climate emergency and the climate problems that we see around our world. In a recent survey that took place in Singapore, it said that 90% of people were aware of the climate problem and its impacts. And indeed, nearly 80% of people wanted to do something about it to push Singapore towards a low carbon future but less than 50% actually knew what to do. How could they address it? Because many individuals think that an individual choice does not make a difference. And if other people aren't doing the same thing, then it will certainly not make a difference. But respectfully, I disagree. I, I believe that individual and family actions can change collective behaviour. We have the technologies, we have the solutions, we just need to get started. So what type of data needs to be collected? Well, we need to collect data so individuals can combat climate change. So we need to know what is the contribution of your diet towards climate change? What is the contribution of transport to climate change? How does your home contribute to climate change? How does reusing, recycling or reducing contribute to climate change? And there are so many other actions that you can take on climate change, but you need to have the data so you can make smart choices. Certainly, there's so much that we can learn from more information, Professor Horton. But what entities or groups should perhaps be first to share their data and whom should it be shared with? Well, I think regarding data, the, the simplest method is to try and think about what your carbon footprint is. And that regards an individual, a family, uh, a community, businesses, governments, and then looking at regions. Now, a carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases that are burnt. And we need to monitor these because they're so very, very crucial. So globally, the average individual's carbon footprint is around four tonnes per year. But that varies substantially. Here in Singapore, it's the individuals around eight tonnes per year. In the United States, it's a staggeringly 16 tonnes per year. And these numbers are meaningful because if we want to stop um, climate emergencies, biodiversity collapse, by 2050, we need to reduce the average person's carbon footprint to around two tonnes per year. So for a Singaporean, that's reducing it by, over, by approximately 75%. Whenever it comes to sharing data, privacy concerns will be raised. Does, is, there, is there a reason for this sort of data to be confidential, though? And if so, why? And what can be done to make more of such data available to the public? Well, I think this is a, a complex problem. But you have to remember that ultimately the purpose of collecting this data, we need to collect it accurately and we need to collect it timely so we can inform future policy decisions. So in Parliament, it's raised about utility bills. Well, that's because electricity is such a huge component of greenhouse gases. It contributes anywhere between around 20 and 30 percent of greenhouse gases um, per year, contributing to the climate problem. So as we move through to um, through the 21st century, our populations are going to increase from 7 billion up to 9 billion in the next 30 or 40 years. And we're moving more and more from a rural to an urban setting. So there's going to be a higher and higher demand for electricity. So we need this data. So for design and construction, so we can look at building size, heating or cooling systems, housing type and construction materials. 
materials. It will enable Singapore in the next decade or so to move towards a cleaner form of energy because although there's been a revolution in Singapore from oil through to natural gas, we're still heavily reliant on fossil fuels. Some 95% of our electricity here in Singapore comes from natural gas. We need to increase our contribution to solar and then we need to have more innovative forms of carbon capture and storage. And without the data, we can't make those informed decisions. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. Professor Benjamin Horton from the Asian School of the Environment in NTU.